Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and today we're doing another seasonal championship this one is called Tip of the Iceberg and uh, yeah we're going to be in classic A class races so uh, yeah plenty of power probably not much in the way of weight and uh, yeah handling that is far better than you'd expect from such classic cars and once again we get in there in the riser Tachyon Speed which yeah is a phenomenal car in a lot of ways and it really proved itself on extreme off-road silly bills. Becoming the first all-electric uh, car on that series while also uh, getting to the top 10, which I did not expect. Considering we couldn't upgrade the power or the torque. But regardless, let's get seeing what races we're going to be doing and what cars we can choose from. So yeah, one of these cards you can actually win by doing this championship, which we'll take a look at in a second. But yeah, we've got an Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale, which is a superb car. 245 horsepower, something that weighs less than 1,600 pounds. And yeah, it has really good handling and braking, despite being as old as it is. Then we've got a brace of Ferraris, uh, a racing car, a uh, racing car for the road, and another racing car. All of them have about the same, well, these two have about the same power, but then obviously the uh, Spa 330 has... A huge amount of power because it isn't meant for the road whatsoever. Then we've got another pair of racers, GT40 Mark 1 and GT40 Mark 2. Uh, again, two cars that again weren't really meant for the road and two completely different versions of the uh, GT40 because yeah, the uh, had stupid amounts of power, but obviously the Mark 2 had even more, but it also weighed more. Uh, but it is in terms of handling and braking actually better despite having a more in the way of weight. Then this is a car that you can actually win by doing this championship, the Maserati Tipo 61 Birdcage. Again, extremely powerful, not even all that much in the way of weight, and uh, yeah, handling is again, once again, really rather good. Then the uh, 300 SLR, which had a bit of a tragic backstory in terms of its racing career. This is the one that crashed at Le Mans, killing 80, 90 people. It was a horrific crash, uh, and because of its magnesium body, actually, uh, cause a lot of horrific burns but still a great car in its own right 310 horsepower weighing less than 2,000 pounds is yeah not to be uh, messed with to be honest and then a couple of Porsches the 906 Carrera 6 and the 718 RS60 again two extremely lightweight cars the 718 they've been the lightest of the cars here uh, but not the most powerful only 160 horsepower but when you weigh less than 1300 pounds you really don't need all that much in the way of power Slightly heavier, but only by 80 pounds, and yet it has, as you can see, 50 extra horsepower and 24 extra pounds feet of torque, which is uh, why this is, yeah, far quicker at the top end and also in terms of acceleration. So yeah, we're gonna go for. Ooh, I don't think we've had the Ferrari 250 LM in a uh, race before. So yeah, not the best in terms of acceleration, but I think because the uh, gear, the gearbox is pretty uh, slow off the line, as you can see by the launch not being all that good. But 315 horsepower and weighing barely 2,000 pounds is hard to argue with. So uh, let's get in this V12 Beast and see what it can do. Hopefully the launch off the line won't harm our chances too much. But yeah, as far as you know, classic races from the 60s go, this is an absolutely gorgeous looking car. But let's hope the looks are all this all that this has going for it. So yeah, as you can see, not the best in terms of gear. Uh, boxes cover and launch but as soon as we get through the gears and get up to the high 8000 rpm rev limit we're uh, well and truly good that sounds glorious it's a shame we don't get small capacity uh, v12s anymore although the only reason that we're ever small capacity uh, v12s at all in the likes of ferraris was because of the tax reasons in italy they tax the cubic capacity and not the uh, end the amount of cylinders. So that's why you had you know that f uh, Fiat 8V, which had an 8 a V8, but was only I think two liters. That's purely because of the tax laws in the in Italy, and that's why you find rarely find big V12s in you know Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and the like for a, a long time. It took, me, took until the 70s until those uh, taxis changed. 
quite frankly, I'd love to see what a um, modern small capacity uh, V12 could be like. I imagine they'd be quite formidable, to be honest. Oh, stepped out a little bit on the uh, out of that corner there. He's well, might well be good at handling, but we are on wintry conditions, and uh, yeah, very little in the way of weight, and all of that power does mean that they can be a little bit, uh, you know, twitchy, a little bit uh, on the edge. That's one reason why they were so good. Finally into a podium position. Who is up front? Or more like what is up front? I think it's a pair of GT40s. Mark 1s. Which is not a surprise because they are a cracking car. It's easily one of my uh, favourites that have been added to the Forza series via this game. Long advocated for the Mark 1 to be added to a Forza game. Because we've pretty much in every Forza game I think had the Mark 2. So uh, only seemed fair to finally have the Mark 1 in a game, especially since a lot of it was British de derived. Drifting an expensive car. I've got one long left. Don't have as much power as the GT40. But we are slightly lighter. Oh, extremely close. The GT40 was not as good as those through those last few corners, but yeah, they were too uh, close to the finish line to really make any use out of them. But still, second place is good. Uh, it gives us a solid 16 points to start with. We're right in between two GT40s. A Ferrari 250 Testarossa is in fourth. And then a Jaguar D-Type is in fifth. So, uh, yeah, let's not let's get on to the second race. So, despite only getting second place and uh, having quite a struggle off the line, the uh, Ferrari impressed overall. And, uh, yeah, considering it's not the most powerful out there, yeah, getting second place was really rather good. So uh, we're on a quite a small and tight circuit for our next race. So I figured we'd go for the uh, 906 Carrera 6. And yes, it's not quite as light as the 718, but it does have just as good in terms of handling and braking. But it has that extra bit of power and speed to really help it, uh, you know, compete against the uh, far more powerful competition. Because there's no doubt that these are two of the least powerful cars here. So uh, yeah, let's see what 210 horsepower and something under 1400 pounds can do. I also really like the look of this uh, Porsche, it's a bit more unusual compared to some races from the period. And uh, certainly doesn't look like any other Porsche out there. And again, like the Ferrari, revving to 8000 RPM. But unlike the Ferrari, it does not struggle to get off the line. And this has even better handling than the Ferrari because it's lighter. mince me of this small tight circuit. It's a tip over there that we can win from doing this championship in front of me. like a Porsche Ford fight here. A pair of GT40s and another fellow 906 behind me, but then a GT40 right up front. Which certainly wasn't the case at Le Mans when it came to Ford. They were more battling Ferrari at the time. But, as we know, Ford absolutely whipped Ferrari.
or because Ferrari turned down Ford's offer to buy them out. And like plenty of people have said in the past, there's nothing uh, like spite as a great motivator. And spite fueled Ford's, you know, desires to win at Le Mans. White paint sure does show up the uh, dirt and the um, the grime though. So it doesn't look as pretty as it did when it started. And the Ford is making mince meat of us on the straights because it has more than 100 horsepower over us. 180 actually in fact. And us weighing about a thousand pounds less is not going to make up that kind of difference. Although I do think we're better in terms of handling around the corners. So we certainly do close up that gap quite a fair bit. Gain the lead, but are we going to be able to maintain this on this final straight? I don't think the Ford got out of that corner all that well, although it did look like it was gaining right at the last second there. But first place is where we end up, which is great, because that makes up for the Ferrari's second place in their previous race. And uh, yeah, that means we've got a pair of four GT40s right on our behind. They're only 0 and 10 points behind. Then another Nano 6 is 14 points behind in 4th. And then another four GT40 in fifth, 16 points behind. So, uh, yeah, the GT40 does look like the most popular car here. But does that mean it's necessarily going to win? Well, we'll have to see in the third and final race. So, with a win there from Porsche, let's get in something from a different manufacturer. And I think we're going to have to go for the GT40, to be honest. It's probably the most iconic car here. And it's also probably one of the best. Not got quite as good handling and braking as the Porsche, which we suspected when we were racing in that second race but I think the uh, margins aren't all that different the braking is actually better on the GT40 but the handling is 0.1 down but there's no doubt that this is quicker 7.4 to s speed over the uh, Porsche 6.8 and 6.9 with acceleration on the uh, Porsche which is better than this but I think this has the uh, better mid-range clout whereas Porsche is probably the best off the line and probably best uh, below 100 mile an hour but I think once you get beyond that this is where this would reign supreme so uh, yeah let's uh, see what the uh, iconic GT40 can do and hopefully win is what it is going to do because we are up against a bunch of other Fords as well as Ferraris and I'm surprised they're in the uh, golf colours here love how uh, agile and quick at to steer this car is. So it's nothing like the uh, mid-2000s version of the GT40, or the Ford GT should I say, because it wasn't called the GT40, because it wasn't 40 inches tall. And we've got the Ford's arrival at Le Mans up front. What is up front? Is it a Porsche? Might be the 718 quite tall from this distance but we're making mincemeat of the rest of them 
a way the Porsche would have been able to get up to these kind of speeds. So I think we made a good call not going for that on this race. Because it was a bit indecisive of whether to go for a uh, lightweight, good handling car around this circuit or the previous one, but I figured the previous one was so small that a small, powerful-ish car with a little lack of weight would have been better around that previous circuit, and I was right, so let's see if I'm right about this one. It is the 718, which is far lighter than this car, no doubt about that, but I doubt it's got the power. We have more than twice the power, yep. So the Porsche is probably better in terms of handling. But for whatever reason, the driver's tires really wuss out on that bit there. Which is something I hope is sorted out in the next Forza game. Make the driver's tires a bit more fearless. Love the rate of speed on this thing though. It's 160 miles an hour in the mid 60s is hilariously quick and that's not even the top speed of this thing though I doubt you could ever get to the top speed of most vehicles to be honest on this circuit this is a good balance between big power lightweight and agile handling is perfect for this circuit quite frankly. If you go too much in either direction then you will struggle. This is pretty well balanced between all of those elements. Because the uh, Porsche is certainly uh, really well good in terms of the handling department but it does not have the power or the speed to make up for uh, make up on uh, these more straight orientated or speed orientated areas because there really isn't a straight on this circuit outside of this small bit here mostly fast corners and uh, tight bends at times but yeah there we go a win with the 4 GT40 from 1964 two Porsche 718s coming second and third which is a surprise considering they don't really have the power Although they do seem to be have been upgraded, so maybe that's why they were so quick. Then the Ferrari 250 GTO in fourth, and then the Ferrari P4, the 4 GT40's arch rival, is in fifth. Meaning we have eight points ahead of the 250 GTO, and we're far ahead of the, both of the 718s and the P4. So uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed that championship. Obviously, I already have the Maserati, but if you don't, then this championship is really fun to get. But even then, if you don't want even bothered about the car that you win, it does go towards your 50%, which obviously is what you need to get the riser tacky on speed, which I was in at the beginning of the episode. So uh, yeah, either way, it's worth doing the championship because you get a car and you get to go in, you get percentage towards another car, and uh, yeah, you also get money and you get some fun out of it as well. So uh, yeah, regardless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.